All right, Duke is on the way. Their locker room just opened at 926, so we'll be open until at least 956. A couple of announcements to make. Uh, just a reminder, as a courtesy to fellow media members and team participants, please silence your cell phones, either put them on vibrate or turn them off. Uh, also, recording of this press conference, either with a phone, camera, anything, that is prohibited, so please do not do that. We do, we are, we do have Zoom. If people aren't in the room or are on the Zoom call, if they want to raise their hand, if we have enough time, we'll get to those. We have microphones on each side. So we're gonna start with an opening statement from Coach Shire, and then we'll go to questions for the student athletes, and then we'll dismiss them and go to questions for Coach. We have sophomore forward Mark Mitchell, we have freshman guard Jared McCain. We will start with an opening statement from Coach. All right, uh, well one, I thought it was a great college basketball game, You know, great tournament game. Uh, we knew going in Vermont, uh, John Becker, you know, his staff, the job they've done. Uh, we knew it was going to be a battle, and I thought they threw in, not threw in, but I thought they made some really tough shots at the end of the first half. Uh, the beginning of the second half, they made a great run. I thought our response was uh, what I'm really proud of. And literally, I could go down the line with each of these guys that stepped up and made big shots, big rebounds, uh, but really big defensive stops. You know, to hold them to 47 points, they're tough, man. They, they spread you, they drive you, they post you. Um, and uh, just thought it was a terrific job by these guys and uh, showing a lot of toughness, a lot of heart, and uh, really proud of this win. We're going to take questions for the student athletes. We're going to start in the aisle on row two with John. This side, yep. For both players, John Vanta from Fox Sports. You guys, as Coach just said, you responded there, and, and uh, you held them scoreless for over four minutes to close the game. Can, can you speak on how you guys locked in defensively and just relied on that end of the floor to really lock them down and pull out this win? Let's start with Mark, and then we'll go to Jared. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, they hit some shots there um, in the middle of the second half and went on a run. We just tried not to panic. Um, we went back to the huddle, um, just fixed some things on our communication and just uh, try to lock in. and dig down deep and get stops. That's something we've been talking about the last week when it gets in these tight moments to um, just go deeper and get stops, and we did that. Uh, yeah, I thought we had really good poise down the stretch. Um, you know, like he said, they hit tough shots sometimes, but we stayed poised, and uh, we worked on it all week to get defensive stops. Def defense is going to win us these games. We have, we have the talent for offense. It's going to be defense. Other side of the aisle, staying in row two. Go ahead. Jared and Mark, Michael Lewis, Blue Devil Illustrated, congrats on the win. Um, Kyle has been such a huge focal point of the offense. Um, tonight he only took one shot, didn't make a field goal. They were doing a lot of double teaming on him. How about the effort that you guys showed, and how did you guys overcome the fact that he wasn't really able to do what he normally does tonight? Yeah, I, mean, I got to give a huge shout out to Flip. Like he, he's the one that got me these open shots. Um, so even though it doesn't show on the uh, stat sheet, even if I miss some of those shots, like he, he won us a lot of those, those plays, those possessions. Um, yeah, I got, a, I got a lot of love for, for Flip when he finds me outside the post. Um, yeah, obviously, I didn't know he only had three points. I, I thought he affected the game. Um, his passing was great. His rebounding was great. Um, you know, just he did what it took to win. Um, he played good defense for, for most of the game and just um, affected the game every way. And we ran our offense through him, and he got us good looks and open shots, so that's all we could ask for. We'll come here in the front row on this side of the – room and then we'll go we'll stay in row one at the end here um hey guys with the duke chronicle um can you both talk a little bit about how it feels to play at the barclays center and jared for your first uh, march madness and, and mark for your second start with mark and go to jared again this time um it's great obviously um you know playing at duke we get to play in the garden um barclays is a first for me and it's just a special place obviously um it hasn't been open for the longest amount of time but um just the moments. I mean, just being in New York City, just the basketball culture, and just being able to be here and uh, play an arena like this, one of the cooler arenas I've been to, is just really special. Yeah, I mean, I was I was just super excited to even just play out there. Always grateful for the moment. Um, yeah, every time I step on the floor, especially this is March Madness. Like, I've been watching this since I was a kid, so to even be playing in it is a blessing. So I'm just happy we ever get the win. And um, yeah, <laughs> we'll go stay in this side of the room at the end, row three. Go ahead. For the players, Tom Mary of AP Radio. Do you feel you're building some momentum with this victory? We'll go to Jared and then Mark this time. 
Yeah, I mean, for sure. Um, I feel like a lot of people, you know, count us out, obviously, the past two losses we had, but I feel like we were playing our best basketball at first Virginia. Um, so, I, you know, like Jeremy said, stay on that side. But uh, I think we have some momentum. And uh, when we get stops and we play defense, we can win a lot of games. Yeah, I think anytime you can get a, um, a nitty gritty win like that, um, helps your team, helps your camaraderie, and helps your togetherness. And I think um, we're just going to use that going forward the rest of the weekend and um, to help us. Any more questions for the student athletes? Okay. You guys are excused. We'll see you on Sunday. I'll try. <laughs> All right. We'll take questions for Coach Shire. We'll come back to the middle here. Row two, both sides. We'll start on this on the far side from me, and then we'll go to the other side. Go ahead. John, John Fanta from Fox Sports. Can you reflect on the poise of Jared? First NCAA tournament game. We're seeing freshmen across the country. It's not easy for, for every one of them. Yet he made it look easy for large periods of the night. How proud are you of the way that he played? Well, Jared is uh, one. I'm not surprised by what he did. You know, Jared is, uh, he's built differently. He just is, uh, he's made for these moments, in, in my opinion. And, um, you know, look, I don't think there's one way you can skin a cat with how you put together a team to win. And, uh, you know, like, I, look, I believe in this group that we have. And obviously, you know, do I wish Kayla was out there and we had some injuries with Christian Reeves and Jaden Shute, of course. Uh, but I believe in this group, and you know, you have a guy in Jared who just does. He's uh, like some of the shots he hit. Uh, the one I think they cut it to two, and he hit the three to go up five. That was maybe the biggest shot of the game, and uh, he's not phased by it. He's not phased by anything, and I'm just really proud of his effort uh, and just him being different. Go across the aisle, staying in row two. Hey, John, Michael Lewis, Blue Devil Illustrated. Uh, Jalen Blakes hasn't played a ton in the last couple months and then got, got called on tonight and gave you big minutes in the first half. Uh, what did you see out of him and, and how well he played tonight? Well, I thought Jalen gave us a, a boost. You know, I, I, like his, you could feel him on the court. You know, his defensive intensity, um, he knows what he's doing. Uh, I'm sure he would want back those opportunities and transition in the full court. But to me, that doesn't define how hard and how well he played. Like, he gave us a big lift there. And we just felt like we needed some, uh, we needed to inject some energy into our team. You know, and uh, Jalen's given that to us in the past. We need our bench, Ryan. Obviously, Sean has been there and TJ just to stay ready. And it can be a little bit on who you're playing against and matchups, but also just we need that, that energy. And Jalen brought it. We'll stay on that side of the aisle in row four. Here, Ruben from Newstead. Um, John, obviously, it's a bad ending for Long on his night, yeah. you know, getting helped off. Um, Proctor's defense on him during the game, I mean, holding him nine points below his average, he's the le their leading scorer. How, how nice a job do you feel like Proctor did with him, and how big a part of your defensive strategy was that? Well, look, obviously, Long is a key to their team. He's their leading scorer, but his shooting is scary. And, uh, you know, like, I don't think Tyrese necessarily gets the attention he deserves for his defense. Like, he's a big time defender. And, you know, we're fortunate. Long had a couple good looks that he missed, but also the, the effort, you know, that you have to have for an entire possession because the way they move and screen and cut. It's unorthodox and it's difficult to defend. We'll come to this side in front of me in row three. Just raise your hand real quick so we can see. Go ahead. Hey, John. Jordan Ron on from ESPN. What do you make of your leading scorer having one shot in the game? And are you right if that's the case moving forward if you have to do that as well? <laughs> you know, I'm glad you asked that question because, Flip, so many guys get caught up in stats. And so many, you know, especially young players, it can be about scoring. And, look, he's our, he's our leading scorer. You know, he led us in assists during conference. He's led us in rebounding. He does so much for our team. But for him to be such a willing passer, and we have so much shooting on the floor, I thought it uh, was just a big time game by him, to be honest with you. And it's a lesson for any high school player that's trying to make it. You know, like he impacted the game, taking one shot. He's rebounding. 
I, I should have said it with those guys up here, but I thought our guards screwed him a little bit. I thought they missed some open shots too. You know, he ended up with four assists. I thought it could have been more. Um, but just really proud of him. And he competed the whole game. Competed the whole game. And um, so, again, do we need him to give him more shots? Yes. Uh, but tonight I thought he made some great reads. We'll take one more question for Coach if there is one. We'll go here in the front on this side of the room on the aisle. Uh, Herb Delancey, BSTM. Coach, how great was it to have the atmosphere, although it's not Cameron Indoor Stadium, for, but for the, your fans to travel up here to New, uh, New York and Brooklyn, New York, to support your team? I thought our fans were incredible. You know, we felt it from the beginning. And, you know, one of the things when you get in these, uh, the first round game at least, maybe the second, second round game as well, but you have, it can, when you're the first game, it can feel, uh, like it's not full because you still have other teams that are playing after us. They have tickets as well. And so what happens is all of a sudden halfway through the game, you feel it even more. And so when a team is making a run, especially, I don't think the other teams are rooting for us, but uh, you know that's the feeling that I get sometimes. But uh, our fans were incredible. And I thought it was an electric environment. You know, To have the tournament here in New York, uh, in Brooklyn, I think is a great thing. And uh, you know, our fans travel as well as anybody in the country. So we need everybody back on Sunday and uh, can't wait for this opportunity. Coach, right, we thank appreciate you. you taking the time. Thank we'll you very see much. You on Sunday. Thank you. Okay, we have Vermont up on the podium. We have head coach John Becker. We have Shamir Bogues, and we have Aaron Deloney. We'll start with an opening statement from coach. Then we will go to questions for the student athletes. We have microphones on either side. Just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Please give name and affiliation before asking your question. Once we're done with the student athletes, we'll dismiss them, and we'll keep coach, and we'll do questions for coach. But coach, if you can start with an opening statement, please. Yeah, I mean, really tough loss, and obviously it always hurts a lot when your season ends, especially when you have a season like we've had this year, uh, just a special group of, of, of guys and, and people uh, that achieved so much this year. And, and uh, you know, we won't be defined by this loss, but it obviously hurts, you know, on a lot of levels. Um, you know, season came to an end, careers came to an end, um, and that's always hard. That's, that's always really hard to deal with. Um, but I thought we battled. I thought we did enough defensively, even though we weren't, uh, weren't perfect, but we battled on that end of the court. You know, we kept their All-American um, at bay, uh, so to speak. I mean, he made some really good pass plays, and he took what, you know, what we were doing to him, um, which is a credit to him. But, you know, we just couldn't find the magic you know, we could never get on that run, uh, string a bunch of shots together. Um, and, um, you know, but credit to Duke, you know, they made a lot of nice adjustments. Obviously a very talented uh, team, well-coached team. We wish them luck as they move through this tournament. And um, we will continue, um, we will continue to work, develop, recruit, uh, do whatever we can so we can start advancing in this tournament and, and um, you know that's all we can do and and uh, and we'll pray for TJ Long um, and his health um, and so but I'm proud of, of my team uh, especially these two guys up here with me today who are just uh, winners warriors uh, and have meant so much uh, 
uh, to us this year and, and Aaron Deloney's meant um, so much to the Burlington community. It's hard to put into words what, um, what he has meant uh, to us as a basketball player, us as a person, us as a leader, and, uh, but what he does in the community, uh, working with kids and, and being available. And um, he's, he's a special, special person that um, is gonna do great things in life, and, and, uh, but it's hard to see him go. Questions for Shamir or Aaron at this time? We'll start here at the end of the aisle, row two. Uh, Alex O'Brien from the Burlington Free Press. Uh, Aaron, um, how close is this team for, to getting over the top and, and um, finally winning that round of 64 game? Um, I think we're really close. Um, I think we honestly had it tonight, you know. Like you said, Duke made some good adjustments, um, but we just got to, I think, just look, look further, like Coach said, um, develop, crew, do whatever we got to do to find it. We're going to stay on this side. We're in the aisle on row four. Uh, for either player, Jerry Beach from Field Level Media. Um, you guys got the two, uh, missed a three, to go to head, and then I think it was McCain hit a, hit a three on the other end. Did that kind of feel like the turning point there? If you could have gotten ahead, like Coach was saying, maybe get in that little run a little bit and make them uh, put them on their heels. Did you kind of feel like that was a turning point there? Start with Shamir, and then we'll go to Aaron on that one. Um, I think, you know, our main message was just stay together. You know, I think. Uh, we really don't. We really don't get too high. We really don't get too low. So I think the, our our main message is just stay together, and that's what it was all season. So, yeah. Yeah, I think there was a lot of plays here and there that kind of changed the uh, momentum of the game. That was one of them. Um, but what can you do? Any more questions for the student athletes? Okay, fellows, you're dismissed. Thank you for taking the time. Questions for Coach Becker at this time. We'll start over here in row three. Hi, Charlotte Carroll with The Athletic. John, do you have an update on TJ and what the diagnosis is? No, he's, uh, the doctors are looking at him right now. He was obviously in a lot of pain leaving the court. Um, his family was able to get, his parents were able to get down with him, but um, I, I don't have a, an update as of now, but, but we'll make one available as soon as possible. Come up here in row two, staying on that end. Um, Alex Bryan from the Burlington Free Press. In a game like this where like you, you missed front ends of foul shots in the first half, the, the fouls that mounted up and, and Duke got into the bonus pretty quickly, I mean, was that something you just couldn't overcome there? Yeah, I mean, we knew we had to play close to a perfect game. Uh, and, and like you said, to start the game, we were super you know, undisciplined defensively, jumpy on the ball, fouling. I mean, they were in the bonus almost immediately. Our starting front court had two fouls almost immediately. Um, you know, and then we missed, you know, two front ends and had, and then we had that stretch in the first half where we had a bunch of turnovers that led, live ball turnovers that led to points. That being said, it's a five point game at half. So I'm like, you know, we, we played the farthest thing from a perfect half. And it's a two possession game with our ball coming in. Um, so, you know, and that's been the story with this team all year. Like it hasn't been as clean a team as far as our execution and, and some stuff, but, um, but they compete like hell. And we have some um, really, really good players uh, that can do some stuff, you know? And so we've been over overcome lack of execution more this year than past teams, you know? And, and so, um, you know, so we, we showed that again tonight against, you know, a top 10 team in the country. Uh, and then in the second half, you know, they made an adjustment where they were just switching. They put Mitchell on Shamir. They're switching everything on and off the ball um, and made us very perimeter based. And, you know, a lot of possessions you guys were watching the game just came down to our guards trying to score on their bigs and taking tough shots, you know, and, and part of the the you know the roster composition piece that's on me was um, you know we just didn't have anyone to throw the ball into a big guy to throw it into to just play inside out or or get easy baskets or force them to double like we did with Filipowski tonight and you saw he generated a lot of we put two on him and, and he did a good job of generating wide open shots for his teammates and so um, 
So that was the thing we were up against for, for most of the year this year, and, and it kind of unfortunately reared its head tonight, you know, in a five for 23 point game where we have, a, it's a good shooting team, but when you're one dimensional, you know, teams are able to either switch and take away your three point opportunities, run you off the line, and, um, you know, and so, um, we never, like I said, we never found that magic where we, uh, that we've had for a lot of the year where we've struggled offensively for people that follow our program and we, TJ Long's mate, you know, you know, whatever five minutes to go, TJ's got that wing three in transition that he's made all year, you know, to cut it to three and he, we miss it. And, and then, you know, um, they kind of just started milking the clock at the end and did a good job with that. So, um, yeah. I guess answer. I guess that's a long way to answer your question. That yeah, we made too many mistakes. We've kind of done that all year, and we still, even against a really good team, had an opportunity um, to make up for that. Um, but again, we just weren't able to in the second half. Our next two questions will be on the aisle, one either side, row four. We'll start on this side. Hey, Coach <clears throat> Jerry Beach, Field Level Media. When, when the season ends like this, are you able to appreciate, you know? Uh, you know, what you guys have accomplished and what you've done, not just this year, but was it 10 titles in, in mm -hmm. 20 years? Yeah. In America East uh, power. Are you able to appreciate it now, or is this something that happens a little further down the road? You know, there's, a, you know, not many advantages to getting older, but one of them is, you, yeah, you start to appreciate things a little bit more and are able to put things uh, in perspective a little bit quicker. And um, I'm certainly enjoying this and appreciating this much more than when I was, you know, uh, when I was first starting out as a head coach. And so, yeah, I mean, look, we, we were 28 and seven this year. Uh, we replaced four starters for the second straight year, went 15 and one in, 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 a, in the Americas, which was uh, the best year, you know, the, the, the strongest year in the Americas in a long time. We were 21st as a conference um, in, in Ken Palm and, and our commissioner, Brad Walker, here has done a great job with our conference. And so um, it's a conference that's on the rise. Um, and uh, we navigated that 15 and one replacing four starters and, and some of the flaws that I mentioned as far as uh, my recruiting and roster composition. So, um, so yeah, I appreciate it. And, um, you know, the hardest part for when the season ends is just like, I'm not gonna see Aaron Deloney every day anymore. That that's that that that's the part that sucks. We'll go across the aisle on the other side. Roger Rubin from Newsday. Uh, John, the couple of questions about TJ. Um, I'm, I'm oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I was spacing out there for a second. <laughs> uh, did you get to communicate with him at all when you came off the court? And can you tell us that, like what was what he was like, what his demeanor was? He was clearly in pain, he was clearly upset, and when I addressed the team after the game, he was in, on the training table kind of, you know, in the shower slash bathroom area, you know, the, the glamorous situation that he was in there, or, or the training table was. Um, and he was, you know, upset, upset. His parents made it down, you know, so I just kind of let them be. Um, I get, you know, I, I didn't really, you know, I didn't talk to him, I gave him a kiss on the head and just, you know, and, and as far as the game that he played, I know that it wasn't a good shooting game. Do you think that that was more about the defense that Proctor played on him, or do you think that it was more about like the way that you guys were running things to try to get him looks? Uh, yeah, I mean, I got to watch the tape. Yeah, the deep. I mean, he listen. He's had five game winners this year. He's 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 got the magic. He's had the magic all year. You know, he came here to, to have this opportunity in his first year plays at the Barclays Center, you know, 20 minutes from his house. Um, the kid is an awesome kid and an awesome basketball player, and he gets a lot of attention from the other team. They face guarded him the whole game. They didn't leave him, you know. So, and that, that, that stuff's been happening um, for a long time, so it's hard. You know, he knows he needs to make shots. We know he needs to make shots. It's hard to run stuff when you got a guy, uh, six foot five guy, face guarding you uh, all over the court. And so, but that one, that one with five minutes to go in transition, where we, you know, we can finally get him loose a little bit. Um, he's made that all year, you know. And and uh, he didn't make it tonight, but you know, 
I'll go down with that kid every day of the week. And, and uh, we're not here today uh, without his season, without his heroics. Um, and, um, you know, I thought he did a lot of other things really well. Like when he got here, he wasn't a great defender. You can't play for me if you, if you don't do that. He, uh, we battled. We battled a lot, me and him, earlier in the year to get him, uh, you know, and, and, and now he's a, he's a good, dependable defender and a, and a really good rebounder. Like, he, he was one of our best, you know, Sammy Alamuto, another kid, you know, that rebounded. But those two guys really rebounded out of their, you know, out of their areas and, um, and, and from, you know, from the guard position. And so, um, yeah, you know, he was awesome this year. Do last two questions. We're going to be on at the end here, row one and then row four. Hey, John. Brian Morick here with uh, Fox News. Um, John was in here a few minutes ago. He basically said, he pretty much said that he felt that the crowd was definitely on your side. Did you sense that? You're nodding like you, yeah. <laughs> like you did sense it. Did you, feel, and did you feed off of it, I should say? And was it fun up until the end result? Oh, it was fun. And, and listen, what this program has become, like, I knew that's what, you know, we were playing close to home, you know, but like, this is like, what this program has become is, is amazing. And, the, and to see all the alums, basketball alums, that flew in from all over the place to be here in this game, and all the families, and all the fans, um, you know, it was, it, it's, it's, it's incredible. And it's a, and, and that kind of support and loyal fan base is a big, you know, it, it all goes hand in hand with, with what we become. You know, we become what we become because, you know, hopefully everyone gets to go to a game at Patrick Jim at some point in their life, you know, but it's an experience. And those people travel and they, you know, um, and they're just such a smart, compassionate fan base and it's folksy and everybody knows everybody. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, um, it was awesome. Yeah, we fed off that. And uh, we wish like hell we could have gave them more to cheer about. Um, and they were, you know, they were, they were ready to, to, to explode on every basket we made and did. We just didn't make enough of them. Um, but, God, I just was hoping, you know, we did for the most part just could have found the magic and just could have made a run late. The place would have, the roof would have came off the place. And, it, you know, our guys were tired. We're, we're playing, you know, we're playing NBA players. You know what I mean? Like, we don't have NIL. We don't pay anyone anything. These kids are zero-star recruits. So we had to expend so much energy against this team to, to, and to fight like that. We need, you know... The last piece to get over that hump, you know, we, we just needed a, some magic and let the crowd just carry us home. And, and, you know, it's not always a storybook Hollywood ending, you know, but uh, we, we, are, we feel very, very fortunate and blessed um, to have an opportunity to do this in front of um, just great people and great fans. We'll stay at that same end. Row four, last question for Coach. Hey, John, uh, Michael Dugan with WCAX uh, up in Burlington. One last question on Aaron. About a year ago, enters the portal, decides to come back, steps into that leadership role, starts, comes off the bench, starts, comes off the bench, just his career arc as a whole, and then kind of all, all of that all together this year, his journey for this past 12 months. Um, how much of Vermont basketball, what of Vermont basketball does he best represent to you? Yeah, I mean, he were, he's a perfect example of the people uh, in our program and, and um, you know, what a career. You know, I mean, it just seems like yesterday I was flying out to Portland to recruit him uh, and meet his family, which is an incredible family and grandparents, and they're just um, pillars of that Portland community. And, you know, he was just this really, obviously super undersized kid, uh, cool as hell, tats, you know, sweet as could be, uh, and could play and just had the it factor. And uh, he came to, to Vermont and like, didn't play his first two years very much. And that was, you know, he shot every time in high school and played the whole game and was the best player in the state or the second best player in the state. Set all kinds of records. And, uh, you know, and, and just as the years went, then he became sixth man of the year once. 
I don't know how many in the history of our conference or any conferences are two times six man of the year, which he became uh, last year, uh, because usually those dudes become starters. And he did start the next year, and then it wasn't the right fit for our, it wasn't, we didn't have the right mojo. So he came to me and said he wanted to come off the bench, or if I wanted him to come off the bench, you know. And so he did and had another great year, and we had another great year. And he, you know, he's got four rings. And then this year, he goes into the portal, comes back, turns down a bunch of money, comes back, asks him to be the leader, which is hard to be the leader of, a, of, of anything. And there's some leaders in this room. Um, it's hard to be a leader. You, you really don't get any days off, you know, and, and it's, it's always, it's always got to matter to you. And you always got to be, you know, you always got to be on. And, and like, I, like most of the stuff that happens in a team, like happens back at the house, off, but when they're not at the court, when they're, when they're there, they're, they're on their best behavior, right? Because I'm there, all right? And I can take, the, take that from them then. But, you know, how are guys acting off the court? Are you able to confront your peers? Um, and that's not something that was always natural to AD. And it took a little while this year, but he became an incredible leader. And by the end of the year, he was running huddles. He was running practices, you know, not running them, but like you heard his voice. And the guys all respected him. And, um, and he, he offered to come off the bench again this year after Myrtle Beach. And I brought him off the bench. And, uh, and then we had a bunch of injuries, so he got reinserted to the starting lineup, which was the best thing for this year's team. But he was willing to make that sacrifice again. I was like, you know. So I love that kid. He's everything. Um, that you could ask for. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on another great season. Thank you. A reminder, Hammond Communications will post a recording of both of these press conferences in the NCAA's digital media hub at ncaa.veritone.com. That's ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts for the, both press conferences are being provided by ASAP. Those will be posted shortly. I believe hard copies are also being left in the media workspace.